Hey guys, it's me. Before this podcast starts, originally Haruspes, who does the very excellent breakdown analyses of the different Halo games, he was slated to join us, but due to an intolerable hangover, he could not join us, and I do not blame him because I had one as well. <laughs> and Ian also joined us late because... Well, it was Easter, and so there everybody had their families over. Everybody across the Halo community was probably doing Easter with their families, and Ian's room was taken over by tiny humans. And so he couldn't join us for the first probably 30 minutes, but he does come in later. If you guys want me to, I can point put a timestamp in the description of when Ian joins. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. It's going to be me... Hidden Xperia and Ian Halo Cannon. Dying Light is getting a battle royale mode. What? Yeah. Really? Right. Yeah, and it's it's thankfully not like a hundred people, it's only like six, I believe. Six person battle royale mode. Yeah, and it's but think about like okay. dying light with zombies running around and stuff. I mean it'll be interesting to see how PvE works in a battle royale setting that'll be interesting um yeah because i don't know if it'll be fast paced enough but oh well it looks incredibly slow paced because it's like it's open world um there's zombies everywhere littering the streets and so it's like it's like battle royale with hazards that could be i mean it'll be interesting to see how it works well hell, as far as i know there's no other there's no other br mode that's done that yet well there was that call of duty style uh game that i don't oh, know if it's come out yet isles of nine no it's 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 a call of duty style uh game but the gimmick is that there are zombies walking around the map so it's like imagine call of duty team deathmatch with just zombies <laughs> yeah. wandering <laughs> Not that awful Resident Evil game from like 2010. Yeah, the runs a really on bad one engine. that tried to be, tried to be like yeah 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 tried to be like <laughs> tried to be an esport like a Resident Evil esport. Yeah, Not that game, one. The game's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's funny um, the way like Capcom almost seemed embarrassed by its existence, so they just like dumped it on the marketplace and then like abandoned it in the middle of the night, just made off with the money and didn't, yeah, <laughs> like it didn't support it at all. <laughs> I mean, can you can you? blame them they tried to make it a resident evil multiplayer game and esport like what yeah. it's fucking amazing and we Jeez. last we were supposed to have haruspis and ian halo cannon but they ditched us but to be yep. fair probably for realistic reasons i know haruspis has like a ridiculous hangover and i'm like okay no i get it <laughs> it's your, you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be like 70 percent of a human if you join this yeah, podcast while hungover and it i depends about the hangover it could be even worse than that and i believe uh ian has been com his uh room has been completely taken over by tiny I think humans ian's exact word is where uh family is over and the youngins have just invaded my computer room yeah yeah they've <laughs> he, he's com com currently under siege by tiny subhumans so we yeah. need to, yeah. <laughs> well subhumans hold on that's a that's a bit far <laughs> send your prayers to ian i hope he survives yeah <laughs> like, I, hope he su I hope he survived the storm so the idea was to basically do a lore podcast <laughs> while drunk but i'm drunk and we don't have more lore experts so i can't <laughs> Oh my god, and I don't drink anymore after I got alcohol poisoning a few years ago, so... What? You got- wait, hang on. Oh god. Hang on, you Bro. need- What? Okay, so, New Year's Eve 2015. Okay. Um, I- I, was, I had the, my friend at the party at his house, so I went to that. Um, I drink so- I mixed so much alcohol. I mixed, um, beer, wine, Jaeger bombs, whiskey, rum, vodka, gin, um... And some other stuff. I mixed it all. I drank copious amounts of all <clears throat> of all of it, and ended up getting alcohol poisoning for like a week after. It was a week long hangover. It was awful. Did you have to it go to the hospital? Awful. No. Um, oh, thank goodness. I probably sh I probably should have done, but I just I just kept saying that. And there's no point. I'll just wait it, out. Yeah, it's like um, I I told you I without s explicitly saying it i may have had my first ever time being uh 
you know, weed yeah. is, weed, I'm just going to say, so weed is legal in Washington, D.C., and I live in the state of Virginia, <laughs> and th- my third time was so bad I could barely stay awake, and, and after that, just the thought of smoking is like, oh, no, 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 I feel like I want to vomit. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, I, I don't, I don't fuck that, with any of that stuff. Is that like you with alcohol right now? You're just like, no, 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 you. like, I, I... Like I drink it still. Like I have I have wine every now and then and like beer and stuff. But I don't I don't get drink anymore. That's, I don't do that anymore. Oh. After after what happened last time, I'm not doing that ever again. There's, Never. There was this time when I drank an entire bottle of champagne myself and just Ooh. puked all over my back deck because it was like Ugh. I'm not surprised. Cause champagne gives gives like evil headaches. Champagne. Champagne. Yeah, it's champagne. it's pretty nasty. We, um, yeah. We we were thinking before this podcast we were talking about maybe we should talk about Halo Six because there's that rumor that they're gonna announce it after the Halo World Championship, <laughs> which isn't true and the rumor's unfounded. I feel sorry for anybody who believes that. <laughs> what did you like? I I knew that it was obviously a joke and it was for april fools but they were like the next evolution in halo halo battle royale (laughs) and that (laughs) that scared me for a second until i saw the date and i mean the graphic graphic looked pretty slick the graphic (laughs) that they knocked up for it looked pretty slick i'll give them that (laughs) yeah but it was here's the thing like when you want to make a quality shit post like that you can't use official artwork you know like you can't take the png halo 5 spartan and then just photoshop a flag in front of that like you have to pose them yourself to make something look original yeah, well, they did a good job because there's even people. I'm on, I'm on the Reddit thread night right now, and there are some people that are like actually getting annoyed by it. <laughs> so it worked. The shit post worked, for better or worse. Yeah. What do you think? Because, I mean, obviously it's a joke right now that we yeah. we know back in 2016 was it? I forgot how many months after Halo Five release did Frank O'Connor say. Uh, where we we view Halo 5's terrible enhanced mobility as a success, and we're gonna build upon that awful idea uh, for the sequel. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it was. I think it was a few months after. I want to say it was like March or April after launch. So like five or six months after. Um, it was on NeoGaf, right? You put it on NeoGaf. Yeah. I think. Um. Yeah, I think it was about five or six months after launch, and considering that. 343 said that they'd already started Halo 6 before Halo 5 launched. Yeah. It doesn't bode well. <laughs> it doesn't uh, bode well. Yeah. The, the, um, I, I, I know why they did that, because I get it. We're in the triple, the modern day AAA gaming sphere where Halo, we've now gone three years close. No, not even three years. Less than three years since Fair we've enough. heard any news about the sequel, and that's unusual for the Halo community because usually we hear about the next game months after the release of the current game. Yeah, well, I mean, I want to mention something about that actually. Um, uh-huh. So, like, Halo is still on a three year dev cycle, right? It might even be four with Halo 6. Yeah. It might even be four. That is, uh, to me, that is really bad. Because you've got games like Fortnite that are getting massive new patches like once or twice a week. They're getting like entirely new game modes and features and everything added once and once or twice a week. And obviously everyone knows Fortnite is absolutely killing it right now. And meanwhile, you've got Halo on a three, possibly four year dev cycle with very little in between. That like that it's an outdated system now. Having three year having constant three year dev cycles with like a few months of content and then nothing until the next game is outdated and it's it's it might be a controversial opinion but i i halo needs to not be on a three-year dev cycle anymore in my opinion whether that means that they have a main game and then a spin-off and then a main game then a spin-off or if that means that they hire another company to make a game as well as 343 i don't know i think that a three-year dev cycle is extremely long and it's way too long for now for the modern gaming market where people are expecting like so much content to come in such a small time well that's that's where the issue of the games live service games oh, where that comes yeah. into in the fact that it's way cheaper and probably less uh expensive to release a half-baked game and then slowly complete it over the course of multiple years 
um, yeah. then release a game. And the, like, I'm thinking of the Ubisoft formula where for a couple of years, <laughs> close to a decade, they were shitting out a new open world game every like 11 months. Yeah. And that probably costed them a lot of money, which is why a lot of their games are so half-assed. Um, and then they stopped after a while. And then sure enough, the first Assassin's Creed game to not come out in like 11 months that I had an extra year of development time. It was, it's heralded as the best it, yeah. one in recent memory. Everyone was saying that it's an amazing game, like a genuinely good game and an awesome Creed game as well. Far Cry 5 just came out and that's fucking amazing. <laughs> that game yeah, is so especially good. they did exactly the same thing with Far Cry that they did um, with Creed. Like they, they had Far Cry 4, then they had Far Cry Primal that came out like a year after that was just the Far Cry format reskinned with yep. some boring like prehistoric setting. And then they were like, right, let's take a break. Let's let's focus our attention on one thing and let's go for it. And it worked like a charm. Everyone loves Far Cry 5. All the reviews, apart from the ones that are whining about its politics, are saying it's like amazing. The, the series has gone back to what made 2 so great. Um, it's really it's a really fun game. Yeah, it's... It's, it's done a great job. The, Ubisoft are killing it right now. Yeah, the best way to describe Far Cry 5 so far is... It's the first example I've ever seen of a game studio recapturing lightning in a bottle. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the most fun I've had with the series since 3. And I mean, I've never actually... I've played a little bit of 3, um, but I've never actually been into Far Cry before. But Far Cry 5, like... The setting, the story, all the like the, the the stuff that you showed me, the jokes in it and the stuff and like how they, they take the piss out of like everything. Um, it, that that <laughs> I really want to get it for that alone. No, and it's it's also this is one of the few games where I actually think I may actually buy the season pass for it because I appreciate Ubisoft's yeah. honesty up front and the like here's gonna be the DLC you're going to get, here are the contents of them. Um, uh, here's the season pass if you want to pre-order these DLCs just for full clarity so you know what it is that you're buying. Yeah. And because of yeah. that honesty and the fact that the DLC looks so ambitious and creative, it's not just like, here's a couple boring side missions that take themselves away too. It's like each DLC is so wacky and fun themed that I'm like, fuck it. I'll buy it. <laughs> I mean, the DLC even kind of reminds me of um, it reminds me of Fallout 3's DLC because Fallout 3's DLC was so varied. You had like Operation Anchorage that was set in the past in like a snowy mountain range. Then you had Mothership Zeta set on a fucking spaceship. It reminds you of that because you've got the Vietnam DLC, then the zombie DLC, then the the alien DLC. Yeah. It's so varied and like 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 it's it's all over the place it's, well, it's cool and they're clearly taking notes from the way halo 5 because like we all hate halo 5 we get it like it's not the game we thought it would be but F halo 5 the one thing it did incredibly well was how aggressively it made forge a point of the game and then obviously a little bit too late but they did add that custom games browser which has breathed new life oh yeah that's that great game. And you notice that after the custom games browser came and then more news outlets online were commenting like somebody made a working calculator in Halo 5. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Suddenly every game under the sun announced that they were going to be having an a editor mode and an easy oh, way yeah. to find other players. And Far Cry's already had an editor mode, but Ubisoft has tried very hard to make a point with this specific game that the editor is a thing. <laughs> and I mean, to be fair, from what I've heard and what I've seen on like Forge Labs and stuff, they've done a really good job with the editor. It's really good. I've played yeah. some really weird maps so far, and I'm excited that all the content of the DLC if you buy the DLC, like the zombie theme DLC, all the assets that are in the zombie theme DLC, that will then be dumped into your editor. So you can spawn oh, zombies cool. and comical graveyards and stuff. That's cool. I know that they've already got assets in there from like Watch Dogs and... Have they got some, some Siege assets in there as well? Probably. I mean, it runs on a different engine than Siege, but I can't imagine oh, okay. playing the models is too difficult. Yeah, I know, th I know there's Watch Dogs like skyscrapers and stuff which is pretty cool yeah it's uh, far cry 5 is really good and i'm a person who doesn't like ubisoft generally but they've been killing it lately yeah no ubisoft are doing good i mean siege is blowing up still yeah they've got far cry 5 that's doing super well they've got a creed that's doing super well again 
Yeah, that that back on top. That zombie, back on top. The zombies mode for far er, for siege is a little bit disappointing. Uh, I'm just annoyed that they made it a temporary thing. The fact that it's a temporary thing and like the poor reward pull because they clearly want you to buy those goddamn oh, gambling yeah, yeah. gambling packs. Yeah. That's what's obnoxious. And I I've played it three times and thought it was like a oh okay so it's like kind of a not as refined Left 4 Dead. Got it. Yeah, that is pretty much what it felt like. I mean, it's cool and all. It's I don't think it's it's not spectacular. It's fun with friends. It's, it's got a very cool atmosphere. The the soundtrack is fucking awesome. Yeah. The soundtrack is incredible. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's, it's decent. The aesthetic it's is decent. also very unique. I'm glad they didn't. I mean, yeah. it's cool. Not that generic zombies wouldn't have worked because, you know, Siege's very realistic aesthetic, realistic zombies could have been cool. But I appreciate that they opted for something more creative. Yeah, they're I sea urchin zombies. I, I don't know. I would have liked to have seen an actual, like, genuine twenty eight days later style horror mood. Like, have it yeah. focus on horror. So I think Siege could have done horror really well. I mean, the the slight aspect of horror they've got in Outbreak is good. Like, we've got um like the the bit when you go into the lab to save that doctor. That's pretty yeah. fucking terrifying. I... That, that fog everywhere. I was theorizing the game cheat. I mean, not theorizing because my theory has no basis in reality, but I was like... Speculating. I was like, I can't imagine that internally they did not at some point have an internal conversation about whether a Halo-style infection mode should be integrated because that would work so well with Siege's attacker-defender-style gameplay. Yeah, like attackers are the zombies. Defenders are the survivors. Like boarding up the windows, boarding up the doorways, and stuff. Yeah, that would work pretty well, actually. <laughs> I mean, Set I Travis and stuff. Yeah. No, it would be awesome. Like even if it was one guy as a defender, and then the rest of the like eleven people or whatever are zombies trying to get, get to him. It'd be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be good. That would be good. Yeah, with no response, it could be a very interesting style thing. And I can't believe we're talking about fucking live service games instead of Halo, which is the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to the topic. What do you think? Because, I mean, we, we all have our jokes about uh, Halo 6 is going to have war running like Titanfall, um, or it's going to be a World War II shooter, or it's going to be a Battle Royale <laughs> game. Like, whatever the current trend is in the AAA gaming sphere. Like, what... What do you think Halo 6 is going to do or be? Uh, I don't for a second think it's going to be a classic game. Um, Unfortunately. I don't for a second think it's going to be classic. Uh, I don't know. I At this point, like I, I've I've exhausted my speculation. I've just I've speculated almost everything. I get I, it's going to be it's going to have enhanced ability. Um, it's going to have a rec system. Uh, in my opinion, I, I, people always say like, oh no, the rec system will be better than Halo 5. It will be less intrusive. I don't think it will be. I think it'll be worse. It's going to be more cleverly ingrained into the yeah. core mechanics than Halo 5's. Because they made a shitload of money off oh, Halo yeah, 5's. It's, it's... They made a boatload of money off Halo 5's. If, you're, if you think that a publisher is going to see that and then for the next game say, no, let's turn it back, then uh, I don't know. And it's, annoying. it's also annoying when you see a lot of influencers say, it's not going anywhere, so you may as well get used to it. Because it's like, it is not going yeah. anywhere, but that doesn't mean you should sit down and accept it. Yeah, no, that, that mindset annoys me because it's, it's the mindset that you should just be like, oh, well, we can't do anything, so let's, let's not bother. Like, yeah. No, I'm going if to, I, if, I, if I don't think something works in a game, I'm, I'm going to continue to fight back against yeah. it until it's either gone or reworked. Yeah. I'm not just going to sit there here and let them trample on us. Yeah, it's it, like, it, I miss, not that Halo has ever had an exceptional history with DLC in that it's like, here's some post-launch DLC maps that'll be unplayable in a few months because the population is yeah. so low, but surely there is a better and more morally, uh, morally compact way of doing a system like this that doesn't involve gambling fortnite if you want to do any system fortnite well fortnite Fortnite's is gambling them. as well right no it, no it doesn't yeah it there's no gambling boxes. in fortnite no it doesn't 
Yeah. No, no loot boxes in Fortnite. It has uh, pinatas. You did there in game. You, you get mean, items from them in game. You mean you Nothing can't? Yet. Can you buy pinatas? No. no, 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 no. They were like a limited event where they ran around in the map, and you, like, you, if you destroyed them, you got like a shotgun or something. What? That's no, that's nothing to do with actual like micros. Fortnite loot boxes. I thought it was loot boxes. Nope. You just buy. You straight up buy what you want. It's Titanfall Two system. You just buy. You see, if you see an item in the shop, you just buy it. Yeah. Look, uh, llamas, prize llamas, or something. They're called. Yeah, they're in game. They're in the map. They walk around in the map, and you can find them and open them up. Yeah, but uh, for a game destined to become free to play in the future, there's one current sold package ranging in price from thirty nine ninety nine. It looks like you can yeah, buy but... the prize llamas. I'm pretty sure you couldn't buy the llama. Well, the only the only micros in that game, you buy V bucks and then you buy a skin with them. You don't like, you don't buy a, a random loot crate and then crack it open. Okay, if if you can buy prize llamas, then that's completely bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Let me let me just check. Um, I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that you can't. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can. <laughs> no. I I mean, I've been playing the game now for like two months and I've not seen any. Okay. I also recall you really disliking Fortnite originally because I get that oh, you, don't, <laughs> you don't like cartoony art styles. Here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. I am extremely stubborn because I hated Overwatch when it first came out because of the art style. I couldn't stand the art style. And then I played Overwatch and I fucking loved it. And then with Fortnite, I hated it because of the art style. <laughs> and then I played it, and I, now I'm like clinically addicted. Fortnite's great. I think it's awesome. I think cartoony art styles like that, like Fortnite or Sunset Overdrive, or I think all those look great because it's like if your game has a strong visual look to it, I'll take it over a bland, boring mili military I'm, shooter with no color. I'm starting to lean that way now. After Overwatch and Fortnite have sort of like swung me over, I'm, I'm starting to think that. It, it does though, there needs to be like, it, it can't just be so obnoxious looking. Like some companies can do the cartoony aesthetic very, very well. It doesn't work yeah. for everybody. Cause you feel like you're being patronized. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Um, and again, Epic did a great job with Fortnite in that sense. It's also weird to think about Fortnite being just, it started out as this zombie game that not a lot of people <laughs> gave credit, and then they yeah. added a Battle Royale thing to capitalize on a trend, and then, you know. And then it killed one of the trends. And oh, no, then it I, killed it, PUBG. It, it slaughtered it. It didn't, it. Uh, it didn't kill PUBG. It annoys when people say that, because I, I just said that, and it annoys when people say that, because PUBG has like two and a half, three million people online like every day still. Yeah, it That's not dead. killed it, PUBG. It absolutely murdered PUBG. PUBG doesn't it exist anymore. It's its throat. PUBG <laughs> is now in a grave, and nobody <laughs> plays it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, nah, it didn't do that, it, but Fortnite is just blown up fortnite well, i tweeted like a month and a half ago saying that fortnite is this is this generation's halo 3 and everyone was like nah what what are you on about what, what are you on about it literally is like it's a cultural phenomenon the um the well what's super interesting is this is something i've been thinking about i know we we're not talking about halo which is like yeah we really are um <laughs> the the fortnite craze has kind of had me a little bit worried because now PUBG is going to be introducing a smaller, more condensed map. And then we have Dying Light, which is doing six six players uh, Battle Royale. And it's like, are we starting to see kind of, for lack of a better term, the Call of Duty-ification of Battle Royale? Yeah. Where it's like Battle Royale is going to get so condensed, so casualized, like all random elements are going to be stripped to the point where you hit a breaking point where some new <laughs> game is going to have to come in and create a new trend like the Battle Royale the problem did with is, Call of Duty. Yeah, the problem is here, though, the things that people were copying from Call of Duty well, like their instant gratification shooting mechanics, like snappy aiming and stuff like that. That's very generalizable to like loads of different genres of games. Whereas Battle Royale in itself is a genre. You can't just like, 
there's not much variation that you can do within the genre. I think Fortnite, Fortnite the is a really creative very example. Creative <laughs> when they smell. Yeah, yeah so much better or worse. Ian, if you'd like to contribute, oh consider the industry. Here. I've been trying to contact you. Thankfully, Luke noticed. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, my little ones have run away. Thank God. No, I hate to ret- I hate to go like to bring you back a bit, but I'm curious, Luke, because you might be the only one who knows this. What exactly are battle passes? So basically, in you Fortnite, talking, yeah, you're talking um, about microtransactions. That seems to be that like in cosmetics, yeah. so I'm the only ones I can find when I look so through this. The, the battle pass is like a you buy it, and I think it's ten dollars or like eight pounds. Yeah, um, like a one time purchase. Um, and it unlocks a bunch of challenges for you for this for this season. And then for doing those challenges, you rank up. Um, there's basically two leveling systems. There's an XP system, and then there's a tier system. And for completing challenges in the battle pass, you get tier points. And then for getting tier points, you rank up the, you rank up your battle pass and then unlock skins. So it's you sort of you buy the option to get more skin to unlock more skins basically okay it's an interesting way to do it but yeah it's, okay. it's yeah it is quite so interesting that's your quite... i figured there had to be something if it's free even if it does have a paid oh, yeah. version too oh yeah well i mean but... even without that you can buy v bucks which are just like buying like it's the microtransaction currency and then you just with those v bucks you just buy a skin like you straight up buy a skin like like before, literally about a minute before i hit record on this podcast i bought i bought the easter skin <laughs> so like it's you just hit you just you buy buy V bucks buy a skin end of. What are there any like Ian? I don't know if you've been playing a lot of games recently. Like if you keep to date on a lot of the modern games, like how do you feel about mm. games as a service? I don't like it. <laughs> You're not a fan of live service <laughs> games. Not in theory, at least. I mean, there can uh, there can certainly be good ways to execute on it, but. Are you recording, by the way? Yes, I am. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I got. I knew, I opened Audacity as soon as I typed my first message nice. that hey, okay. I'm I'm available. <laughs> no. Um. From what I've heard and seen of it, uh, I don't really like what I'm see like what I see. Okay. Because it's essentially the same thing that uh that happened with stuff like uh photo or the Adobe products. Which, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's basically yeah. the same thing. They became instead of going from a product, they went to a service. Now, there's definitely good aspects of that, like get using consistently using Adobe as the example here. You get constant updates. You're pay you're paying like you know however much a year. I think it's like a hundred dollars for Photoshop, six hundred for the whole the whole package. Yeah, um, which is a lot of software. It all works generally pretty good, and you constantly get updates. Uh, the best stuff. However, However, I would much rather just purchase that and not not have to deal with uh, with updates. Because I can't tell you the number of times that these updates have screwed over my my softwares in some in some manner. Like right now, all my apps are ready to update, but I have yet to do so because everything works right now, and I don't want to fuck with that. Yeah, <laughs> but. I gotta say, I, and I back when I had sorry, oh, yeah, just back when I had regular Photoshop, I think it was like Photoshop eight, and then later on CS four. Those both worked amazingly for years without any need for further updates. Yeah, I was gonna say I agree with you because the idea of games as a service, like the idea is cool, but the execution, the way that many people execute it, is really bad because they just yeah. end up using the service as a way to force really bad micros into a game. Or yep. just release um, the game unfinished. Or, yeah, oh, yeah. Bo- that's the big normally. one. You release a game unfinished and release the rest of the content through micros or overpriced DLC. But what I was going to say, in terms of uh, like Photoshop and stuff, that, that's actually made Photoshop affordable for me. Because um, I obviously I'm in university right now. And with my university email, I can get like a mad discount. So like I get, I think it's like 80% off the entire Adobe collection. Yeah, but Whereas you you get discounts before the before they were a service too. Yeah, but it was like still really C- expensive. My CS4 version was a student version. Oh, well, when I when I looked at that, it was still super expensive, like at know. least like a couple hundred pounds to buy it like straight up. Whereas now I pay like a hundred ish pounds a year. Well, just everything. for Photoshop or for the entire no, thing? No, no, for, no, for like it's, I think it's like hundred and fifty quid for everything. No, I, I meant like the when you the purchase, uh, the older purchase. You said oh, it was like a, um, like a just for Photoshop, quid. I think. 
just for just for yeah. Photoshop. So if that's, I, I only if that's at the that. case, and you're you were getting ripped off over there, whatever was set, selling it, because my it version was, a few was years like two hundred. The version I had was like two hundred dollars or th or something, and um, oh, for and I, was, for the entire suite. Okay, no, but, it was like three hundred pounds of Photoshop for me, like just for that. It was mad expensive. Yeah, that sounds like you were going to get ripped off by some third party, but I don't know all the details, and we don't need to go and dive down that right. rabbit hole. <laughs> and back to Halo. Yeah. Halo, with Halo, I mean, obviously, I think it makes sense, given the trend that the video game is swinging in, that the next Halo game will be live service, and that it'll last a couple of years. What, yeah. like, are you are you more concerned or more optimistic at the idea of a Halo game that could potentially be playable for years to come? It honestly depends on what how they execute on that entirely. Yeah. Like I'd love I'd love to always be able to hop online, have a and grab a good game. Um, not that I really have any trouble getting games as it is. On Halo Five. Halo Five or MCC actually. Yeah, yeah Halo Five. <laughs> but, a lot uh, of people like to joke, and I think to fulfill their like. I like classic Halo, so my narrative is that Halo 5 is a failure. Halo 5 matchmaking is a lot faster than even new releases. I can find games very quick on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is, some playlists are pretty straight, but like Team Slayer, like Warzone, you can get games yeah, pretty, Nazi, like, interrupt pretty quick. Yeah, not to like interrupt you though, Ian. <laughs> but no, yeah. I mean like that, but um, you know, some, something more akin to what we like to uh, glorify halo 3 as like you know something like that kind of feeling with uh games as a service but at the same time i i do worry like you guys were talking earlier about how the microtransactions might change and the second halo becomes games as a service those microtransactions i still defend i'll still defend halo 5 as one of the better versions of microtransactions in the triple a industry as mm -hmm. far as games that you pay a full price for and have microtransactions in them not to say that they're good, but they're, <laughs> yeah, they're it's like, yeah, just, yeah, it's, it's the best of a bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> and, and is the best, is the, is the way that I'd like to put it, but you know, that's going to just get immediately worse if we, if Halo switches to some kind of games as a service model in any manner, do, like maybe do they'll do something like agree... battle. Sorry, go ahead. As you can say, do you agree with my thought that um, that microtransactions will probably be worse in Halo Six? I like the way LNG put it. With um, how, how did you put it earlier? It was like they'd be oh, they'd be more clever. They'd yeah, be, they'd be more yeah. clever with it. Like I'd like to think that maybe they'll they'll drop um, the Warzone model uh, in terms of like like. At least in that regard, it was it, it was still restricted to just that one mode. And I'd like to think that they drop it entirely, but I doubt it. I, I yeah. If if I had a choice in how that I'd say, I in how they were to approach microtransactions for the next game, I would say maybe mirror Overwatch. In that it's entirely it's all aesthetics, and maybe the weapons that you can unlock if his weapons are mo it's mostly aesthetics and the weapons you can unlock would be more like permanent unlocks than I mean um, I think get all these racks I personally care more about I care more about the about it not being only aesthetic than Warzone weapons because Warzone didn't really do much for me I mean if you want to load weapons into that yeah. into the rack like, system for that then I don't really and care to clarify but... when I say only aesthetics I mean weapon skins armor skins Yada oh, yada. Okay. Maybe Not some armor armors. Maybe okay. some, but most okay, should well, be either like a reach style purchase system or a Halo Three unlock system. I prefer the reach style purchase system just because Halo Three's kind of bugged me. Um, <laughs> Halo Three, where it's here's like five armors. <laughs> Well, no, 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 not not in terms of armor, just the way you unlocked them bothered well, yeah, me. Yeah, and that it was very contrived and kind of more... Uh, like, for as intrusive as, as people say the, the Halo 5 system is, I still argue that... I would argue that the Halo 3 was more intrusive, at least in my experience. I mean, watching people try to get splat... Like, uh, the mongoose <laughs> splatters. <laughs> yeah, the mongoose modown, or, like, killing each other for the splazer and shit was just... Yeah, it's, Not... it's, it's a weird thing to create a 
a level up system to unlock armor that doesn't impact the gameplay like get five kills doing this awful thing that breaks the game for everyone involved exactly well, yeah. no, that's the thing most the, to counter that most of them were in you had to get most of them in free rolls. that oh, i will shit. yeah to be fair that's true but it did kind of but now it's busted out. you can't get anything because <laughs> no one plays free for all in halo 3. what are you joking me Lee, halo Lee, 3. Yeah, when Back on Pack came, Lone Wolf was what, what, was what I was getting games in the fastest. I was I getting games in Lone Wolf, Wolf straight away. Anymore. I can't find games in Lone Wolf anymore. Well, how, what are your... What rank are you? What, yeah, I was going to say, what are you guys' uh, skill rank? Your skill I'm number? Like, I'm at like a 43, I think, 44. But I feel like that only highlights the thing that I can't find. Like, it's so inconsistent. Because <laughs> the game's population isn't at a reliable number where these systems can work as I'm intended. I've never had a problem with it. That's that was one of the few playlists that I could actually find games in. Yeah, I can never find much in in, in Lone Wolves. I always had to go to Rumble for my FFA fix. Um, yeah, you know, post like Halo Four and Halo Five. That to be clear. What do you think? Yeah. I know Masters and I we had a discussion recently about level up systems and masters i know he i think the way he described it was he appreciates the halo 5 system more than he actually likes it in that not the money aspect but the aspect of this is now a progression system that requires a lot of time to do which isn't something uh, halo's really had like people seem both to both halo like, 5 and Sorry, I shouldn't interrupt. Sorry, no, no, go no, ahead. No, finish, there's, finish I your... know there's that delay. There's that delay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like both Halo Reach and Halo 5 have had this same kind of progression system that takes a long ass time to level up. I don't find any either of them fun. No, I don't. Like Re Reach was fun at the boring. beginning when you when you got when you were like rapidly leveling up, but the second you get past, like into the past the warrant officer ranks, <laughs> it's just it's tedious. It's, it's not boring, fun. Like, yeah, it is. Leveling up gives you... It, there's no reason to leveling up, especially in Halo no. 4 and 5. It does my head in. Actually, <laughs> I like Halo... levels in Halo 4 and Halo 5 are boring-ass numbers. I actually mean like... Nothing. I'll, I'll give you the, the numbers part, but I mean, the actual... The act of leveling up in Halo 4, I think, actually, is probably one of my favorites. Just... Like after you get to after you get to level fifty, you do the specializations. Those are yeah, those yeah, are fun. They, those are fun. I, I, I hated. I, what the, I think Halo Four. A lot of people dismiss yeah. its leveling up system just because it's a different art be, style. Yeah, but to no, be the, fair, the leveling up system it. was quite cool with the the op, the what were they called operators specialization. Operation. Specialization. Yeah, that's the one. No, yeah, I did no, not that, like that, that they locked them all up like initially to unless you pre-ordered the oh, limited the edition. Game. Wasn't no like the limited edition like had oh you can. Get access to all eight specializations, whereas everyone else has to do them in a strict order Bro, or something like that. People were selling codes for that on eBay yeah. so much. Taras, how drunk are you today? Relatively intoxicated. I am About jealous. Ten minutes ago, I could hear your cans rattling around. Yeah, yeah you can I just hear heard now. I am tinny, mate. Got I'm honestly tinnies. jealous. I've got yeah, I've got a disgusting amount of garbage cans lying around. <laughs> oh, you should see my desk. What? Okay. Meanwhile, I've got water bottles. So two, were, two bottles of water in mine. If you were, like, obviously Halo 6, I do think will do some major revisions to the Halo formula that we all expect to to try to integrate it more smoothly into the game's service model, which is basically MMO light. That's the way a lot of MM, or games mm -hmm. service seem to be trying to, going, trying to yeah. go for. What do you think Halo 6 might do to kind of try to integrate game service live service whatever they call it better into halo's formula like how would you do like a a progression system that would last for years to come that you'd play like an mmo honestly i think we're gonna i genuinely think we'll get something sort of like the battle pass um from fortnite and i'm i'm game for that because the battle pass is actually really good it's a really good idea. It's not pay to win by any means. It it's I guess you, I understand why people wouldn't like it because you have to pay to have the option to unlock stuff. But the best thing about that is that you still have to unlock the items. You don't just get them straight up. You have to still unlock them. It's sort of just like you pay to get a, an increased uh, you pay for a certain word? number of challenges and rewards kind of yeah yeah it's it's a cool idea it's i don't know it could be it could be better it could be worse what do you think ian 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm because I haven't played Fortnite at all. There's nothing about it that looks very appealing to me, but I'm weird like that. <laughs> but from what has been described, it does sound like it could be interesting. As long as it isn't Halo four, three or five, three Reach or five, I would well, be the satisfied. Well, the challenges are like the challenge. Some of the challenges are like get three kills with a pistol or uh, survive uh, for five or ten minutes in a game or something. Like it's nothing that. There are some that are, I guess, kind of game breaking if you want to go that far. I mean, the pistols in the game are pretty bad, and some of the challenges are to get kills with the pistols. So I guess you could say that's intrusive. I mean, if they're, if they're, if they're like the challenges from Halo Reach, I wouldn't mind too much. The only time yeah, they, that they I, I found are. those annoying or intrusive at all is whenever they were related to Firefight. What do you think about the idea of like them withholding or creating armors that you can pay for or pay for directly or do weekly challenges so, i mean it's hard to say because i know like the the act of creating this content there also does need to be a, a consistent flow of money every month to justify making this content post launch yeah. like how would you construct a system like that that wouldn't just collapse the entire game under the need to funnel <laughs> players towards spending. Uh, it's, it's a, a million one. dollar question, literally. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. That's a, that's a loaded question. Um, I don't know. It's You've just got to make content that people want to buy. Like, that's the thing. You've got to make... You, you can't have content that people need. Like, you can't sell Oddball, for example. Um, yeah but you've got to make content like if they imagine right imagine this so in halo 6 like every couple of weeks they release one new set of armor that you can straight up buy for like either rec points or money um like straight up imagine if, if they released hayabusa imagine how hype that would be if they did like if they like got a little teaser trailer for it they got they got the rights back for ninja gaiden <laughs> and, they, and they released like actual hayabusa again like with with katana imagine how sick that would be they sold hayabusa for like i don't know five dollars or 10k rec points or something it'd be sick i think if you make content that people are going to buy then y you don't need to worry about funneling people towards it because if you've got to make the content something that people want to buy and something that is also worth the money not you can't just sell garbage for loads of money <laughs> obviously <laughs> obviously you can't do that well it's, apparently you can if the rec system said any indication well, yeah <laughs> that's true. i can unfortunately it's the weird weird like compromise where it's almost like in order for halo like i know there was that recent job listing on 343 that was oh, like asking yeah. for an in a specialist who could create an in-game economy an in-game economist and yeah that, that worried me that description i mean right out of the bat it sounds very concerning but then you look at mmos like diablo and i think of world of warcraft and like other yep. games where it's almost like they, all of those they, are guaranteed to have at least one person if not an entire team dedicated to their in-game economy yeah you would need which, a, a it, team of people to make sure that it's fair yeah no you would i mean if we're talking about like economies like Diablo and uh, like WoW and stuff, I think it'd actually be quite, quite fucking cool if there was an in-game economy like that in Halo. But how much like, of the game would you have to revamp to create that in-game economy? You'd have to have social much. hubs, places you could explore. No, you like you'd have to no, create, just have a menu. You have to create so much content though to warrant there being an economy. Like people, need a menu. people complain about the amount of armors in Halo 5. You would have to quadruple that for there to be an in-game economy. Nah, 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 you wouldn't, you wouldn't. What you, do you think, Ian? You, I know you... we all cut you off in the mad scramble to comment. <laughs> yeah, 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 go on, you go. <laughs> no, I've, I've just been sitting back and listening, but no, I, I think you're both, like, right, there, there'd be a lot of overhaul of some core systems, and especially uh, the rec system would be very different from what we know it as. But, um, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, there's definitely ways you could do it, I think, but if any, if anything, the, like, going back to the whole MMO light thing, a lot of the games that have done that, they have been a flood of, there's, there's a flood of useless or just undesirable shit in the system yeah, always looking at you destiny <laughs> <laughs>
Like, like, yeah, all the level, like, everything that's under purple in that game is in Destiny 2 is just absolutely undesirable on every level. It's, po it's pointless, yeah, it's pointless. Yeah. It just it it looks no bad, purpose. it's got no good stats, and nobody wants it. Yeah. And that would be the same for Halo in a lot of regards, unless you, I don't know, that maybe if you, like, started splitting up the armor again... <laughs> Into the individual, like even further, like into the, like oh gee, you get your that. individual thigh plates and your individual calf calf armor. Sorry, change your yeah. up to your kneecaps. I, yeah, which, I, like in theory, as a system, I wouldn't mind that. I would like the more I can customize my Spartans armor pieces individually, the better. I say, but yeah, I agree. I was thinking, Ian. So last night I had this terrifying thought. <laughs> Of like, oh please go on of like, <laughs> so i get that a lot of people miss the gritty art style of halo even though to be fair some of that grittiness has probably contributed to texture uh like uh texture limitations where what you may mistake for gritty is actually just a very fuzzy looking texture because i'm just curious what old. people think is gritty like other than reach Halo 2 was like the only other one that was kind of gritty in any regard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Halo, Halo, C, C, and Halo 3 were both kind of cartoony. Even Halo yeah, 4 looks well. very dirty in certain areas. Halo 4 is a Halo very 4, dirty I think, look. I think it like nailed the perfect compromise between a gritty look and the classical cartoony and more vibrant the, color not vibrant but saturated perhaps colors. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the best way. Like it's it's a very colorful game. Not like form. cartoony color, even though I just described it as cartoony. Ugh, I'm uh, terrible with words. Saturated is a good word. You it, use that word. It is. Yeah, saturated. It, the colors stand out. Yeah, uh, the, the, they're um, beautiful. My worry was sort of like, okay, people want gritty, people want militaristic, people want it to have like no color, like call, like uh, I said, Call of Duty, like um, yeah, Call of Duty, Halo <laughs> Reach, like Halo Reach, which was birthed in the era of every game has to be colorless and miller militaristic. Yeah. But Could you say Halo Reach in a lot of ways is where Halo started jumping on bandwagons. Yeah, no, Halo Reach <laughs> is where Halo the, started copying of the front the, the the um, what I'm concerned about, I don't know if you've seen Call of Duty World War Two, which is relatively gritty looking until you open the loot boxes and you get the super colorful <laughs> shit in which all your yep. guns are bright and golden and purple and wacky and suddenly looking. it's gears of war and so i'm worried that and i get why they do that the idea is the shitty looking stuff is colored in mud because you want to get the bright shiny stuff which is more rare which encourages spending i'm worried that Fuck that shit i want the happen. dirty shit that's what i'm worried will happen to halo you'll have some people running around looking like they just had a mud bath and then you'll have other people like basically shining with the light of the sun because of the sun. I mean, we have a, like we have a pizza of AR Halo. and a fries and a fries oh, pistol. Oh god, don't remind me. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> the trailer where it's said Twitch is only about 160 god. viewers. We're going to suffer together. <laughs> What's so funny is I like the pizza skin. <laughs> Ugh. Well, this has been fun. Uh, you are dead to me, late night gaming. I will see you never. <laughs> I'm like, uh, Ian, Ian, let's go to Star Room podcast. I'm out. <laughs> yep. start, yeah, they'll start their own spinoff podcast. Yeah, but that's what I'm worried about. Like that juxtaposition where it'll be like the cosmetic shit to get people to spend yeah. money will almost like over time slowly take over the look of the game <laughs> and compromise the look of the game to where everyone it's will like be having rainbow colored weapon skins. <laughs> Yeah, nah, mm -hmm. that's a valid complaint. I think a cool idea would be if they did something like Doom, um, where Doom has this option where you, there's like a slider for the dirt on your armor. So you can customize, like you can have your armor looking. It, it doesn't look pristine, but it, it's pretty clean. And then you can turn the dial all the way up and it can look pretty dirty. That's, I don't, that's I don't know idea. how, though, it affects the game because I know that the Halo, remember how there was that couple period, couple of months where the frame rate was awful if you're playing on forge maps with decals enabled oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i remember that so i don't know how the halo engine would handle like five like 16 players on your screen and they all have muddy armor decals <laughs> yeah that's true to be fair that's true i don't right. know it's, it's a good question thoughts, ian how would you do this how would you handle this stop it <laughs> <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> no no i meant like stop 
Stop. Anyway, uh, I don't no, know. That's, that's the way you would handle it. It's just stop it. <laughs> just stop. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. Like, Get stop some help. What you're doing. This is, this is awful. <laughs> Get some help. Yeah. I think like, I, insert mm-hmm. Michael Jordan meme. Yeah, stop. What this is, I guess, something more interesting, which I think you and Luke would definitely be better experts on with with uh, the live service model and stuff. The Luke I know was super into the idea of maybe teasing the events of Halo Six via updates to Halo 5's campaign, like oh. adding new audio logs oh. that you can find that hint towards future events. Do you think that could work in Halo? Like teasing future of story related events via hotfixes to the game's campaign? Not in Halo 5's case. Just, like, just because I don't think audio logs like would be the best way to, to do that. And hell, I think even. I think it would actually be like building off that idea, perhaps. I guess I, I like the idea in theory of uh, teasing future events like actually going back to destiny one of my favorite things about age of triumph was they released all these new grimoire cards that heavily hinted at what we were going to see in destiny 2 and you know at the time it sounded really awesome even if it wasn't ultimately (laughs) emphasis on at the time (laughs) yeah yeah at the time is the key word in there but it was at the time it was a cool idea and i actually i really i really liked it at the time um, I still like the idea of it, even if, like, like you said, the actual execution in Th- Destiny Two wasn't so great. But maybe something like you, maybe like campaign seems like the obvious way to do it. But I don't know how easy you'd, easy it would be to get people, even the hardcore lore, like lore and campaign people, to want to replay to find these Easter eggs. Do you think maybe I'd be all over even... that? I'd be all over that in a hot second. Well, well, I know, know you, you would, would, so like... would I would. Yeah, <laughs> like we would. Yeah, but I don't know about the general audience. Like getting more of them in there, like Were maybe there? I think like maybe doing that through the multiplayer might be a better option. Like maybe like uh, so, like oh. stuff hidden on hidden on the maps, like uh, like Bungie for, did with um, the skulls in the Mythic map pack, or yeah, well, for for Black Ops when they were advertising Black, well, when they were going to announce Black Ops Three. Um, they embedded a bunch of Snapchat QR codes in a load of Black Ops Two maps. And people have to go around and like scan them and find them, and they got like these really cryptic videos on the Snapchat, something like that, like yeah, embedding something definitely not in Snapchat. the map. I'd, like, I'd, no, 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 I'd, no, 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 but no, like no. maybe you could go like maybe find <laughs> something on. Someone announced me on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like maybe uh, just anything like that. Like, no, like, like they some, hit yeah. like a link or something, or like a QR code to go to a website, like, like or a, just a like single a type li- thing. Just a, like a like a a trigger volume that you activate, you know, and yeah, maybe yeah, it yeah. unlocks. Uh, like if it's sticking to Halo Five, it unlocks an audio log, or maybe it unlocks like a website or something that has some teases about Halo Six. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Some, something like that where they hide things implicitly in the map. Yeah. I mean, I, the, I get this idea from zombies because I'm a f- I, everyone knows I'm a fucking massive zombies fanboy, and the idea oh, of like no, no, no like that. Oh no, no, yeah, no, no one, no one was aware. I definitely don't insert zombies video, into zombies clips into flood videos ever. Um, but no, like an idea like that, like hiding things implicitly in the map that make you search for them. That, yeah, I, I just think that's such a cool idea because it like it gets the community going. It gets the community sort of like working together to find stuff. It, it's cool. It's cool. The the I I heard this interesting thing a while ago. This had to be around the launch of Halo Five, actually, where someone was saying that he felt, in his personal opinion, and this isn't an enhanced mobility debate. He felt that <laughs> he felt that the enhanced mobility of Halo Five specifically, instead of designing levels very linearly like uh, Halo 5's campaign, where it tried to have very traditional Halo levels, instead designing a campaign to be basically Basically, he said, imagine Far Cry 3 if it had exactly Halo 5's movement mechanics and how interesting that would be to create a campaign. Like, obviously, we could argue to till the sun comes up whether that would be faithful to Halo. But if you were to redesign a campaign to be like this persistent world that it's like you never complete the campaign, it's constantly ongoing. Like, what do you think about that, of crafting more of, like, a world instead of a campaign? So you mean something like Destiny? 
like the patrol not patrols like we can the say, little... we can say destiny but like how do, what do you think about that like if you were given reins to create something persistent where we could update it in the future to have teases for the next game not as the main campaign but as a as like a replacement for spartan ops i would love that yeah yeah i was gonna say exactly that that's yeah you're you're a yeah. fan of the I traditional know. single player campaign levels yes <laughs> I, li I like yeah. my I like my single player campaign at least a little, but I would I also love you know additional story and uh, lore content. So if this is one way that we could that devs could uh, invest in that and get more of it out there and also make uh, something that's fun for pl people to play in general casually, then yes, give me. Do you yep, no, I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Do you think Destiny's open worlds would work in Halo? Like, obviously not as Destiny implemented them, yeah. but, like... I no, mean, yeah, I... it, the, the general idea. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But, um, yeah, honestly, I think it could. I wouldn't mind that. I do... I. <laughs> I actually really liked in Destiny 1. I spent so many months when it came out and later on when Rise of Iron came out, just, you know, casually killing shit in the wild. Yeah, which I wouldn't mind doing with Halo. Something about that, exploring the Cosmodrome, seeing the jet lines in the skybox, yep. and hearing the howling of the fallen in the distance. Yep. I don't know if that would work with Halo. It could do. It, it could it, work with Halo, but with the direction Halo 5 has taken the series, like that style of gameplay. Maybe? I don't know. I'd be interested to see what it'd be like, but I think it'd be very hit or miss. Very. I think it'd be very hit or miss. I it's, don't think it'd be... It's uh, weird I'm not sure. when the series hits this crossroad. I think of sort of like Far Cry 2 versus Far Cry the original, where the original wasn't exactly open world, and then the sequel was, like, oh, I guess now it's open world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of like what Mirror's Edge did as well. Mirror's Edge did that. Uh, yeah, Mirror's Edge, I, I remember liking the first game a lot and then being very disappointed that apparently <laughs> the sequel wasn't that good. I didn't. Was... I didn't pay much attention to the marketing for the second one, but I loved the first one. So obviously, I bought the second one day one. I was so disappointed. That wasn't really disappoint. I was disappointed that they decided to reboot it, but I think I think overall it was still good. Just kind of uh, slightly missed the mark with what they it were wasn't... going for. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I just I don't know. I don't think it was. It was nowhere near as good as the first one. No, I definitely agree with that. The first one, and there was a. There was something about the world they built that really stood out, and I feel like it kind of got washed out in the second one. Yeah. Was it the, the art style was beautiful as well. Why is it that they decided to reboot Mirror's Edge? Because it hasn't been that long since the first game. It seems I'm really been, not sure. It was eight years since the first game. Okay, when, okay, never mind. <laughs> it was a while, yeah. And it, it, was, was, still, it was really just... annoying as well, because they added an RPG skill tree to a game that was previously oh, a linear no. mission-based thing. So, like, you had to actually unlock the ability to do a combat oh, no. role, which was one of the most, like integral parts of the of yeah that before. part yeah that part annoyed me like i could understand like unlocking the the wrist launcher shit yeah, some of yeah, the other yeah shit, but sense. like dude the second i found out i couldn't do i couldn't do the duck and roll i'm like you just rob me of one of the base mechanics of the game <laughs> it's like robbing you of sprinting it or something or like yeah. or like wall jumping in it it's, it's stupid like i don't understand what thought process made them get rid of combat rolling like, <laughs> yeah <sighs> Like I, I, I liked the idea that it went open world because that's really what I wanted Mirror's Edge to do after the first one. So I thought that would be a great direction to take a world where you're supposed to be running around. And I like the fact that you could actually do runs independent of the main campaign in Mirror's Edge uh, it, Catalyst. It had some cool ideas. Like, yeah, like there's little yeah. runs you could do. Like there's little side quests you could do for people. Like when you had to like race another runner or like find something for somebody that yep. it was they were cool but i don't think they were good enough to justify going to a completely open world game no yeah i agree yeah, it, was, it was they they missed the mark that's so depressing yeah. and didn't it even undersell to the point where like we don't know what'll happen with that series that series probably isn't I, coming back unfortunately no i don't think it is i didn't so really hear anything really about cool it to be honest shit in the, it's a really cool idea yeah, yeah. 
it's like the, yeah, no, it is. It's, it it's, is. It's like one of those. It's a hit. You know, it's the dystopia hidden in a utopia, which you see a lot in movies. I don't know how often you really see that in games. Oh, it's usually, yeah, it's, it's, usually it's like hardcore dystopia rather of than the subversive art style where it all looks yeah. clean and pristine, and you find out it's actually yeah. all shit, like Portal. Yeah. I think. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Portal's a dark game, despite how bright and vibrant oh my God. it actually is. Yeah. I mean, even the intro to Portal Two is really fucking creepy. When you're in the the room and then like it, it bashes into another building and the wall falls off and you can see all of the other rooms, like all the other uh, test chamber people that just like stored in different rooms. That's creepy. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Anyways, back to Halo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say we're we're hitting an hour now. We are and I don't, don't want to keep you guys. I know this was supposed to be a Halo podcast, but we kind of talked about everything under the sun to an extent. <laughs> um, did you guys kind of say what you have to say? I yeah, pretty much. I'm a. I'm excited for Halo Six. I'm also nervous for Halo Six. Um, I'm a nice combination of it. I'm extremely excited, but I'm also extremely nervous. Fair enough, man. Um, I, I think a lot of people are in that situation, though. To be fair. Yeah. That's yeah. I think that's the global feeling. <laughs> Anxious, anxiety, I, nervousness. I just want to see something. I just want to see something. Just give us like a, a picture like you did with Halo 5 or... Give just me two months. Something. Oh, no, two I months. Know we will get something at E3. If we don't get something at E3 this year, there is going to be absolute living hell on Twitter. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be like... So that, at that, like, point, I'll, that point, I'll find, I'll find the content drought bullshit justified. The content drought bullshit. Yeah. Yes. Because right now I consider it nothing but bullshit. Yeah, um, it's, it's the, the, Halo's, the Halo community's not used to having no news every couple months about the sequel. Yeah. I, it is worrying me a little bit how we've heard, we have heard nothing. Doesn't worry me at all. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So I guess that's that's where we end this. There we yeah, go. It's been yeah. a swell, Halo. It was, it's been swell. It's been swell. Alrighty, boys. Thanks for watching, friendos. And there we go. You we can love stop. you. <laughs>